looking at reflections, I can perform reflections. So our first example, we're going to take a look at a triangle. And we are going to graph the reflection of triangle ABC across the given line. So just remember, our x-axis is here, our y-axis is here. If x equals negative 2, that's going to be right here. This is actually going to be a vertical line. So anywhere along this line, x equals negative 2, that's going to be my line of reflection. And again, it kind of seems backwards, but when we say x equals something, it's vertical because I'm only moving up and down. I'm not moving left or right. This is our line of reflection. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate each point for how far away it is from the line of reflection. So point A is one, two units away from our line of reflection. So I have to flip it or I have to go the same distance. It's got to be equal on both sides of our line. One, two. So my new A is going to be right here. B is pretty easy. B is actually on our line of reflection, so it's going to stay exactly the same. It's not going to move anywhere. And then C, if I, again, were to flip, because another way to talk about reflections is to think about flipping our shape. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, right here. Boom. Boom, boom. Let's make it a kind of a different color just to make it easier to see. A to B, B to C, A to C. So this is the reflection of uh, over the line X equals negative two. Okay, I'm gonna look at our second example, B. I'm gonna erase this first one so we can see a little bit better. Okay. Now, B, if we look, it says Y equals X. So when Y is 1, X is 1. When Y is 2, X is 2. When Y is 3, X is 3. And so we're actually going to get a line of reflection that's kind of like a diagonal, per se. B goes through our line of reflection again. That's pretty lucky. Okay. Now, because we don't have a straight vertical or horizontal line... We got to remember that when we reflect things like this, it has to meet at a 90 degree angle. So if I'm just kind of eyeballing it, I'm saying, all right, this A point, again, something like this is going to be somewhere over here, general location. This C value, again, it's going to be somewhere probably over here um, as I think about flipping my shape. So we got to remember that when we flip these things, when we draw them out, we got to count our points we got to create our lines at a sort of 45 degree or a 90 degree angle like this so if i'm thinking okay i gotta reflect a and it's probably again just looking at this it's got to meet right here i gotta get rid of these dots it's driving me crazy all right so i'm gonna say all right for for a to get there i go one two three units to the right three to the right and one two three four units down so i'm going to do the same thing over here i'm going to say okay one two three units right one two three four units down so again my eyeball test was actually pretty close i would say it's kind of right on that line point b we are lucky it's right on the reflection line it doesn't even move so b is going to stay the same and then point c again if i'm trying to get i would say i'm trying to get to about this point right here, I would say, okay, we're going to go down one, two, I'd call that two and a half. And then I'm going to go over one, two, two and a half as well. So I'm going to start, here's my half. I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to go down half, one, two. And again, that kind of puts me right where I thought I would be. So as I think about drawing this, I'm going to say, all right, connect A to B, connect B to C, and then C to A. And there is my new triangle that was reflected over the line Y equals X. This is like a diagonal. 
All right, continuing on, graphing the reflection across the given line. These are the axes. Again, x-axis is a, gonna be your vertical axis. So it's going to be right here, all the way down. So again, when we have a horizontal or a vertical line, you can find perpendicular really easy because it's just gonna be a straight line and it's gonna meet at 90 degrees. So again, one, two, one, two, boom, there's my new B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, that would meet at a 90 degree angle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three. One, two, three. The Y axis is our sort of like vertical axis right here. And so again, I'm gonna do a similar type of thinking. I'm gonna say, all right, let's count our points. One, two, this would make a 90 degrees. One, two, I'm gonna go over here. Gotta get rid of these. C, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my new C. And A is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Gotta label them, B. And since I did a, this, this is the second one, I'm gonna put a two next to it. So there's my two shapes, again, reflected over the X axis, which again is a horizontal one, and the Y axis, which is the vertical one. So what did we end up doing if we look at this? If I'm looking at my first example, reflecting over the X axis, my X coordinates for A, B, and C are actually all the same. My X coordinates don't change at all. What did change is my Y coordinates. And so if I look at point A, it's one, two, three, four. Okay, let's say it's negative four, uh, one, seven, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My new point is negative four, negative seven. So what did we do? We essentially made our Y values negative. But remember, if you started with a negative, it's better to think about it more like the opposite. So if I started at negative seven and I took negative, negative seven, I actually negative times negative gives me positive. So again, if you think about it as you're making it negative or if you think about it as you're making it the opposite, it is technically the same thing. Very similar for our y-axis. Again, our, when we reflected over our y-axis, the y values stayed the same. It's just our X values that changed, our X values that flipped. Um, so again, if you think about it as negative or you think about it as the opposite, that's kind of where we want to be. When we reflect it over the line Y equals X, we actually flip flop our Y and our, or our X and our Y coordinates. So that's like this example right here. Again, when I flip flop them, if I looked at A, A was one, two, three, four, negative four, three, then I should get um, <clears throat> negative four, three, I should get three, negative four. So we might have been one off, let's see here. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, four. A should be right here. Come on, Mr. Larson. And that actually looks, that looks better. So that, again, these are kind of like shortcuts. These can be useful. Y equals negative X. Again, all that would look like is your line would look something like this. Going the other direction. And you're going to flip your X and your Y coordinates, but you're going to make them negative. Or again, if it's already negative, you're going to make it positive, which is opposite. Write a matrix for the polygon, okay? So again, what we're gonna do when we draw up our matrix is we're gonna, uh, we're gonna basically say, okay, I'm gonna put my X coordinates here, I'm gonna put my Y coordinates here, and then it's just gonna be A, B, C, and D. So A, my X coordinate is um, negative two, my Y coordinate's one, B, my X coordinate is one, two, three, four, and one. C, it is three and negative two. And D is gonna be zero, negative one. 
Okay, so if I look at my rules again, reflecting over the x-axis is gonna make my b values, or my like if my xy coordinates negative. So I'm thinking, okay, xy, I'm gonna trans, I'm gonna turn this matrix, I'm gonna turn all my y coordinates opposite, which again is really like negative. So when I do that, I'm gonna say, all right, I have. <coughs> To keep my A values the same, let's get a different color. So my new matrix, again, this part's all gonna be the same, but my Y's are gonna be negative or opposite, however you want to think about it. And uh, you could then go ahead and graph that if necessary. The y-axis, again, it's gonna be similar. Let's start, this time we just have a triangle, not a quadrilateral. So I'm gonna, again, put my x-coordinates, my y-coordinates, A, B, C. A is one, two, three, four, negative four, negative two. B is three, one, and C is two, one, two, three. Reflecting over the y-axis makes my x-coordinates negative. So again, as I think about, okay, whatever my xy is, I want negative x, positive y, which again is really like opposite. So 4, negative 2, negative 3, 1, and negative 2, negative 3. The bank shot, last example. So again, if you're thinking about pool, if you're doing pool, you're saying, all right, my goal if I'm stripes, which there's no stripes left, is to knock the eight ball in. The eight ball is right here in this corner. So I'm thinking, okay, how in the world am I gonna be able to reflect or bounce this ball so that it can knock the eight ball in? So it's gonna be somewhere like that third example. Again, we're not necessarily quite sure, um, but we can use sort of our knowledge of reflections to help figure this out. So first thing we're gonna say is, all right, the bumper, which is right here, is gonna be our line of reflection, okay? So I'm gonna to have to bounce the ball off this bumper so that it will somehow get and hit this eight ball. Well, we also know that if I reflect it, again, this is a horizontal line, so let's say it's like, I don't know, just we'll just call it y equals zero, sure. Let's say this is y equals zero, okay. Well, that means that this distance has to be exactly the same as this distance. So whatever I get right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy it, because I don't even have measurements, and then I'm gonna move it, oh wait. I'm gonna paste it right here. Okay, so that would mean that if I were to reflect this eight ball over the bumper, my new eight ball would be about right here. Well, now I just gotta say, okay, if I were to hit that, just like this, okay, now I've located the location that I need to go in order to make the eight ball. So again, not even technically really using numbers, using our spatial knowledge and our knowledge of reflections to know that this distance has to be the same as this distance. Therefore, if I were to hit the cue ball right here, it would bounce and knock the eight ball in.